Okay, so, uh, ever since uh, John Jacobson, John's Arcade, was here to pick up my Sente cabinet, I've gotten uh, a few people messaging me on Clav, and uh, a couple of people emailing me, he already had my email, and some people sending me a message on YouTube asking me to do a video on my bowler. Uh, John uh, played with it a little bit while he was here. You saw it real quick, we talked about it real quick. And uh, I guess the reason people want a video on it is looking around YouTube, there's not a whole lot of information or videos on these. Um, probably because not a ton of people have these because they're a big giant uh, wooden uh, amusement machine. Alright, so I figured I had a little bit extra time and I was cleaning up or down here. I might as well do a, a video on this since people are asking. Uh, this is a 1964 United Tornado Big Ball Bowler. Uh, United eventually turned into Williams. The same Williams we know today that does uh, or did pinball and Robotron and Joust and all that good stuff. Um, I don't know when exactly they changed their name, but they did. But Or if Williams bought United or vice versa or so on and so forth. I have no idea. It's just that United uh, eventually became Williams or whatever. But, uh, like I said, this is a 1964 machine. Uh, it is a solid piece of wood. Uh, there's no plywood. There's no, uh, there, there's no cheap stuff here. This is, uh, I think it's... 980 pounds crated weight, the whole machine, if you take a look at it. That is, uh, that's actually a schematic package for this that I haven't had to open yet. And a spare tapper bezel, if anyone wants a bezel. But anyway, uh, this is uh, one big machine. Um, I'd say this is about 6 feet tall. I'm 5'10", and this has got a couple inches on me here. It has your pin deck here. Uh, your lane, obviously, and it's a 13-foot bowler. Uh, basically, you add a half a foot, generally speaking, to any bowler to get the physical dimension of the bowler. So this is a 13-foot bowler, and this is 13 and a half feet long, right from the uh, the shin rubber all the way to the back, very back of that cabinet. And I have something leaning up against the back of it, that black thing. So uh, it comes in three pieces when you get it. Uh, this part. The back box, we'll call it. See where that seam is there? That is one piece. The uh, the pins slide out. The pin deck itself. The piece of wood where the pin mechanisms are on. And uh, I'll try to get you a shot of that in a minute. Um, this is another separate piece. Right from this seam here. See where it joins up with the back box. Forward to here. You can see the seam in the lane right there. And then the easiest and the lightest piece to handle, which still isn't very light, goes from the middle here to the back there. All right. The way this thing goes together, because I also got asked that a couple times, and uh, let's see if we can see in here. Uh, this is not an original piece of wood. This came with no back door on it. If you don't have a back door on it, uh, the balls you know, can fly out the back if you throw them hard enough. There is rubber back here to stop it. Let's see if we can get in here. There we go. You see one bolt that holds it together there. Another bolt that holds it together there. And uh, there are more uh, underneath here. Uh, I'd have to take this wood off in order for you to really see it, um, which I'm not going to do. Because it's just a pain to put to get back on, and there's really not a whole lot to see down there, just the back of the uh, back of the lane. Right. Uh, this is electromechanical, as you can see here. Uh, any adjustments up here? Uh, they're done by uh, I forget the name of them, Jackson plugs or, or whatever the hell they call them. So there's no uh, there's no switches or anything. Any adjustment you want to make to the game is done by moving plugs. And these are all wires and all plugs here. These are the plugs that uh, come from the front of the game that, uh, you know, they take them apart. You know, like your modern day Molex connector, I guess, would be the best way to, to describe it. And there's your ball lift motor. And there's the ball lift. You got a ball waiting in there. 
Uh, the ball lift motor only runs, obviously, when the game is playing, not when the game is on. Um, when you are actively playing a game, the ball lift motor runs. That goes all the way down there. There you go. That's actually not a bad shot. And uh, that little red track you see down there is when the ball goes to the back of the lane, gets in that track, it's gravity fed to the ball lift motor, and the ball lift motor lifts it up. And then sticks it on this hill, and it rolls down that hill, gets momentum, and back up there, like that. So the uh, the ball lift uh, mechanism is motorized, but there's not a uh, not like a modern bowling alley where there's a little uh, conveyor or whatever moving the ball forward. It goes by uh, goes by momentum and inertia. This is the pin uh, the front of the pin deck. You have a fluorescent light in there. Which lights the uh, lights the lane, and I'll try to get around here. Uh, so in there, that's all the pin mechanisms. I know you really can't see that, but it's kind of a pain to take out, and I don't want to go and drop my pin deck onto my lane and crack all my pins. Here's the underside. It's all the pins. These are Chicago coin pins. Uh, when I got the bowler, I got it from St. Louis Ball Bowler. Guy Chris over there, good guy. Um, either the Williams pins are more expensive, United pins, I should say, are more, were more expensive or he didn't have them. He had plenty of the Chicago coins, so I said, yeah, I don't care. Put Chicago coin pins on there. That's what he did. Uh, this is not a contact bowler. All right, You have things like Bally Bowlerama and a couple other ones where they're contact bowlers where the, uh, the ball will actually hit the pin It'll knock the pin over, there's a magnet that's released, and then the game knows that uh, they hit the pin, and it'll fly up into the pin deck. Uh, instead, what the ball does is it hits these switches, and when it hits the switch, the pin flies up, back up to the top there. To, I mean, it kind of kind of looks like it hits it. I mean, you can tell, obviously, it's not hitting it, and it's not the most realistic action, but it works. Down here is one of the most important things for a bowler, is the uh, the flash uh, numbers. The flash is a game you play, and I'll explain that. Uh, but I digress. So, back box gets bolted to the pin deck. If we go under here, oh boy, oh boy. Right under here, you'll see that these two sections are joined by these long steel rods. You have one right by my camera, another one in the foreground, another one over there, and you can see that one down there uh, near the bottom of the rail with the metal plate over it. Those get tightened up. These three screws here with the washers, one, two, and three, that is what you use to adjust your lane, the actual Formica lane. Now, over time, these things have warped, and uh, other things have happened. They've been jostled a lot, you know. So, these lanes, uh, they don't line up perfectly. I'm sure if you were a real perfectionist and you went to restore this, you could do some woodwork and some tweaking, and you can get it perfect. But this isn't perfect. I really don't care. You see, it doesn't completely join here, uh, but it is lined up more on that side. That's not a big deal. The thing you want to make sure when you have a ball bowler, and mine's uh, a little bit out of adjustment, as you see right here, these are for Michael lanes, all right, like your countertop. I don't know if you could hear my kids upstairs playing. This chipping here along the edge of the lane, that's from the ball coming here, and it pretty much making a slight hop because this side is higher than this side. You, j you, you basically want the sides to be perfectly level with each other, which is hard with a bowler that's this old and unrestored. So the, uh, the, the trick is, quote-unquote, is to make this side a little bit higher than this side. And that way it won't uh, it won't hit the edge and chip, which I have to do. I can do that by adjusting those screws a little bit here and there, or uh, you have little wedges of wood that I made. You could um, put little wood uh, little wooden wedges in to raise this part up a little bit. All right? Uh, it does have gutters? Gutter here, gutter here, obviously. Um, there are gutter switches in there. You can see that one in the, the leftmost switch there, little hook switch, as one on the other side. And what that does, it tells the game if you made a gutter ball. Alright. Uh, the switch is all the way in the back. 
that row of switches there what tells the game all right well uh, you hit whatever pins you're going to hit the ball has now left the lane it is now back in the ball return and it's uh, time to count the second ball and obviously the ones in the lanes uh, the gutters right there on the ends tell it well you didn't hit anything and you got a gutter ball I got a big old zero A lot of light bulbs in here. Uh, this whole thing, um, unlike a pinball machine, this doesn't swing out. This whole thing, this whole door, you can see the hinges on the bottom. This all swings down and rests on the pin deck. And there's a ton of light bulbs in there. I put some LEDs in there. They, they, they work out okay. Not great. Um, but it does the job. You're trying to conserve a little power and keep this thing running cool. All the brains, uh, again, this is an electromechanical machine. All the brains are back here. So, can't see anything. Let's get the flashlight. Actually, even better, we'll turn it on. We'll turn it on, and the designers of these things, they're pretty thoughtful because it comes with a service light right up there. But as you can see, this is what's in the back of your ball bowler. Uh, Everything is labeled for the most part. See there are your uh, your adjustment switches, right? Adjustment jacks. Tilt sensitivity. If you could tilt this damn thing, you uh, <laughs> you're a strong dude or woman. Easy normal strike. You can make the strikes easy or normal. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other things you can do here. There's your tilt switch if you start beating up the game. There's your bell when you get a strike or a spare. I can't even move it. It works. It's not jammed. Oh, there it is. See? I know the light's not good back here. Here are all your score motors and steppers. Your frame motor. We can see down to the bowler a little bit more here. And this up here, this little uh, that little contraption, that that bar, is how you open the uh, the back glass, so to speak. So they're pretty uh, they're not super difficult to figure out. Now, if you're gonna get a bowl bowler like this, one of the things that you want to make sure, one of the advice, uh, some of the advice given. To me, before I got this one, and also watching one of Clay Harrell's videos on ball bowlers, is you want to get one with a bunch of good games. Um, the one that they all have, well not all have, but the one that the vast majority of them have is uh, Regulation Bowling, where it scores like a Regulation Bowling game out of 300. All right? And it, uh, it keeps score electromechanically, obviously. You have Dual Flash, which I kind of forget what that is, uh, Flash and Bonus. 90% uh, of the people flash their favorite game. I tend to like bonus. I think bonus is a lot of fun. All right. Um, what flash is, is basically uh, you have to time it. There's a flash motor in that back box. And what it'll do, it'll run through these uh, these scores, these numbers right here. If it lands on, uh, if it lands on 400, all right, you get a strike and the 400's lit up. You get 400 points for your strike. All right. Uh, if you uh, if you if you hit a spare while well, it's on 300, you get 300 points for your uh, for your spare. So when you're on a brand new frame, you bowl that first ball and you hit any pins, it's gonna stop that uh, that flash motor wherever it happens to be. So you gotta time it. If you get the strike, you get the bottom numbers there, uh, or the numbers closest to where you know to the bowler, the bowling position. And if you get a spare, you get the top numbers. If you don't get a spare or a strike, then you just get scored normally. Um, bonus I, I, is my favorite. All right, what well, bonus is, and actually I'll show you. So if you watch back there, we're going to start a game with our handy dandy little doorbell button. It's going to reset. Now you see, um, here from the balls. It returns the balls. You see with the player two score display, 
And the score reel has uh, four points right there. That's because uh, I got a I got a sticky a sticky score reel. I had the same problem with the number one first player score reel. I took it out, I cleaned it real good, and I haven't had a problem since. Uh, I have I stuffed it out with the number with the two player score reel. It's not hard to do. It's just time consuming. It's kind of a pain in the ass to do. So uh, I haven't been really in a rush to do that. I'll take it back here to see the ball motor. Get my flashlight again. I'll go down here. So you see our, our ball motor. And what it'll do. dumps it into the uh, ball return track right there. And that keeps going as the game's on. Even if there's no ball, and it just uh, deals with the balls as they come. So we started a game, and you have this thing here called select scoring. And every time we hit it, it selects a different game. If you look at the green section at the bottom of the back box, you'll see right now one regulation, normal strike. We hit it, now it's strike with handicap, which I'm pretty sure means uh, it's easier to get a strike, or maybe not. I don't know. Now we have it on flash bonus, normal strike. Now we have it on flash bonus with handicap. And now we just have it on bonus. This is my favorite game. Now with bonus, if you look up uh, right to the left, or right to the right, I should say, right here. You see it says bonus frame score. So frames one through seven, every strike is 300, every spare is 200, okay? And the bonus score advances right there. So for the first seven frames, strikes are 300, spares are 200. So let's do this real quick. I'm gonna start, keep, I'm gonna keep try to keep this in the frame as I bowl, so I don't know how good I'm gonna do. Uh, it looks easier than it is. Uh, if you practice, you can hit strikes all the time, but it's not, it's not uh, as easy as it looks. Did I say that right? Yeah, it's not as easy as it looks. I'll put it that way. Alright, that's a strike. I got 300. You see when I got that 300, if you look down here, that purple number, that's your bonus. Alright, and that's what that means right there. So, as you get strikes, your bonus will go up, your total bonus will go up by 400 points. Every spare you get, it'll go up by 200. And that purple bonus score comes into play. You know, everyone says, oh, you know, if this is a bowling game, why is there a four digit score reel? Well, that's because if you play one of these special games such as Flash or Bonus, you can get, you know, five, six, seven thousand, uh, scores of five, six, seven thousand. And when you play with a bunch of people, it actually works out well because it, it gives a larger margin of scoring between everybody. It's actually pretty cool, so I'll show you. Let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see our ball stuck down there. Sometimes that happens. That'll take care of itself. So you see our bonus state of 400 right there, 308, here comes our other ball, Let's see if we can get this spare, which we did, strike, Wait for the uh, the pins to reset. Still waiting for the ball. There we go. See? We're up to a thousand now. Ball. Eight frames. Ooh, 
Oh, I missed that corner pin. Got it. Again. All right, now we're in the 10th frame, right? Let's bowl our 10th frame. See if we can get our uh, our spare. And we got our spare. All right, so we got a spare. It means we get one more frame in the 10th frame. See if we can get. We got a strike. All right, now this is where the bonus comes in. We got a score 3,215. See you right there. All right, normally on our game, our game would be over with regular bowling. However, it's now it's time for a bonus frame. So if I get a strike now, I get the full 2,600 points. If I get a spare, I get half of that. I get 1,300 points. If I don't get a strike or a spare, well, then I'm done. Then my final score is 3,215. So let's see how that goes. All right, hopefully I can get a spare. There we go. And it'll count down if you look at the numbers. And take off, and there you go. My final score is 4,515. And uh, if it didn't return the ball by the time the game's over, if you hear the ball return motor shut off, it'll just uh, it'll hold the ball and the ball return uh, on the ball lift, which is fine. Um, so there you go. I don't know if there's much else I can mention about this. Sorry about some of the shaky camera work while I was bowling. If anyone has any more questions or wants to say anything else, uh, feel free to let me know and I could do another little video if you want. Thanks for watching.